You want answers? You have offended my family. I think I'm entitled. You want answers? I want the truth! And you have offended a Shaolin temple. You can't handle the truth! Surely you can't be serious. I am serious. And don't call me Shirley. Radical Brand. Hey everybody, welcome to the Radical Rant here. We got some uh, news propaganda here on our desk from the drug court professionals and they have a new anti-cannabis flyer that they've been uh, passing out. This has been found out in uh, Montana and uh, other places where they're uh, working on the uh, passage of medical marijuana laws or decriminalization laws. And uh, we are going to take a look at this thing in excruciating detail and give you a look at what's being passed off as fact here in the debates. Uh, this has been going amongst uh, many legislators and, and they're relying on this information to make decisions about uh, marijuana policy in this country. And it's just uh, this, and this is not, you know, something old that I'm pulling up, you know, where they're, they should, they shouldn't know better. This is stuff from December of 2010 people that we're going to be looking at here in the Radical Rant. So let's go right to it in the uh, video screen. For those of you looking at the screen, I'll describe it. For those of you listening on the podcast, it's the NADCP's National Association for the Drug Court Professionals Need to Know the Facts on Marijuana by Douglas B. Marlowe, Juris Doctor, PhD, Chief of Science, Law and Policy, December 2010. Now, with that many letters behind your name, you ought to know some stuff. So th this is going to be exciting. National Association of Drug Court Professionals, you know, our motto, sentencing people to rehab they don't need since 1998. Uh, let's see here. Incarceration for possession of marijuana is the first thing that they want to talk about. And this is always interesting to me when they get to this part of the debate. They, they say it is exceedingly rare to be incarcerated in the United States for the use or possession of marijuana. It's exceedingly rare to be incarcerated for marijuana possession. And then they cite some uh, information from CASA here saying that with marijuana offense only, if you're just busted for just marijuana, it's a 1.6% of all state prisoners are just busted for marijuana only, possession only 0.7%, and first time possession 0.3%. And they do this through a bunch of statistical uh, uh, magic here where they uh, count people who, uh, this is their uh, consideration of prison inmates sentence for marijuana possession account for 0.7% of state prisoners and 0.8% percent of federal prisoners. Well, the problem here is they are considering people that are busted and they don't consider uh, what happens to their lives because of the arrest. I'm willing to admit that the actual numbers of people in prison in the United States just for marijuana are not a great number. It's about 30 to 40,000 people. But you also have to consider how many people are in jail because they violated probation or parole getting caught with a joint. How many people uh, got caught with a joint and had other uh, circumstances like having a lawfully owned firearm that then got considered to be firearm in the commission of a crime sort of uh, statute that got them put into jail. That's the problem with this kind of statistics is it narrows down very few people caught with pot are only prosecuted in jail just for pot. They're usually prosecuted and jailed for other things that, and the pot is an ancillary uh, problem, but the pot is why they got caught or busted in the first place from failing a drug test or a drug dog uh, alerting or something like that. So the other part too is with 850,000 arrests per year in this country for marijuana law violations, every one of those arrests ca carries with it the possibility of losing one's job, losing one's home, losing one's child custody, uh, losing a scholarship, a, a, a grant to go to school. Those are the true damages from marijuana prohibition. But it still, it interests me that they have to open up with saying, we don't really lock up a lot of people for marijuana. Well, gee, if we don't lock up a lot of people for it, why do we still maintain its illegality? If it's, if it's so innocuous that we don't feel the need to lock people up, why keep it illegal in the first place? Now, we'll continue on going through their flyer, and, and let's see if we can get here to... Oh, that's interesting. We'll get here to uh, page two. Uh, the addiction potential of marijuana that we will cover here. I think uh, some of you will be very interested in hearing about this. Individuals who have used marijuana between at least five times have a 20 to 30% likelihood of becoming addicted to the drug. And those who use it regularly have a 40% likelihood of becoming addicted. Define addicted. Does this mean if I've smoked pot five times and I thought... Hey, you know what? This pot smoke is not so bad. I, I kind of enjoy smoking pot. You know, I, I'd rather smoke pot than drink. 
I think I'll smoke pot for the rest of my life. Is that the addiction we're talking about here? Somebody who discovers that they like cannabis and then continues to use it for the rest of their lives? No, what they're considering here is, is again, they go back to these uh, uh, statistics of dependence. And the, the dependent statistics, all they tell us uh, is that 9% of people that try marijuana end up having some sort of dependence on it. And then they, this is the quote that I, if there's anyone out there who's ever smoked cigarettes and tried to quit, you've got to love this one. In fact, the features and severity of the marijuana withdrawal syndrome are virtually indistinguishable from those of nicotine cigarette withdrawal. Now, I know people who have quit cigarettes. I know people who've tried to stop smoking. And I know people who had to stop smoking pot in order to pass a pee test. They'll quit for 30 days or 60 days. And believe me, they are quite distinguishable. <laughs> the person who's not smoking cigarettes is the person you don't want to be around. When it comes to the person who stops smoking marijuana, uh, usually it kind of bums them out that they can't have any marijuana. But aside from that, they don't uh, exhibit any sort of hallmark of, of nicotine with withdrawal like we would see people when they stop smoking cigarettes to, to claim that there would be some sort of linkage between or that they'd be any anything alike just shows somebody who a has never quit smoking cigarettes and b has never smoked pot as we continue down this flyer we get to page three in the flyer where they point out the medical harm the medical harm of marijuana and oh you're gonna love this one here the medical harm of marijuana smoked marijuana has the potential to be as or more harmful than cigarettes. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> the potential to be more harmful th than cigarettes. Yeah, right. The potential. Yeah, and my right fist has the potential of knocking out Brock Lesnar. It ain't gonna happen, but it's got the potential. <laughs> There's the potential there. Oh my God. They point out here, gram for gram marijuana smoke is clearly more carcinogenic than cigarette smoke. No, it contains more carcinogens than cigarette smoke. It is not more carcinogenic. We have shown from Dr. Donald Tashkin's studies at UCLA, 30 years worth of study on this that found that marijuana only smokers not only didn't have a higher risk for head, neck, or lung cancer, they had a lower incidence of head, neck, and lung cancer, not only better than cigarette smokers, but then non-smokers. It's suggested that THC has a protective effect against cancers. And that's why you don't have 430,000 people dying of lung cancer from cannabis like you do from cigarette smoking every single year. That they would even try to say smoked marijuana has the potential to be more harmful than cigarettes is absurd. Here's another one they like to bring up. A person's risk of heart attack is increased fourfold during the first hour after smoking marijuana. Four times a greater heart attack risk. This was a ridiculous uh, study that's been debunked by Dr. Mitch many times. All it does, it shows that you have a more rapid heartbeat after smoking marijuana. And with a more rapid heartbeat, uh, your already infinitesimal chance of having a heart attack goes up a little bit. But it's a ridiculous stat. It's like trying to scare you by saying your chances of getting hit by a lightning go up four times when you walk outside of the house than compared when you're inside the house. Uh, this gets me all riled up here and we'll uh, we'll cover mo more of this in the uh, hour two if you join us in hour two for Toker Talk Radio because they we're only on page uh, three here and there's plenty more stuff uh, to cover in this uh, ridiculous flyer from the National Association of Drug Court Professionals. You'll like this one too. Marijuana has undisputed negative effects on cognitive functioning including memory, learning, and motor coordination. <clears throat> Well, I would like the National Association of Drug Court Professionals uh, to notice and just take a look here in the studio where my uh, motor coordination learning and memory is currently with this hand running two computer screens with my left hand running another computer screen, talking on the microphone and debunking your sad little flyer all at once. This is the pothead who's winning the debate against you guys. Uh, that tells you something about cognitive functioning, memory, learning and motor coordination. Now, as we continue down their flyer, uh, medicinal effects. This is where we get really silly here with the reefer madness. They point out that marijuana is a Schedule One drug according to the DEA, meaning it has high abuse potential and no recognized medical indication. However, the FDA has approved a particular ingredient within marijuana, THC in a non-smoked form, for certain medical indications, such as treatment of nausea, vomiting, and poor appetite. So, in other words, marijuana is not medicine until we take parts out of it and put it in a pill. 
By itself, though, it doesn't work. Uh, recent studies have also supported its use in treating chronic neuropathic pain. Yeah, just as smoked marijuana, according to the American Medical Association, has efficacy against neuropathic pain. Amazing how the plant itself that contains the THC can be as beneficial or more beneficial than pulling the THC out by itself without all the, all the other cannabinoids, terpenes, and flavonoids, and uh, trying to get some sort of medical efficacy out of that. We've got so many people that can tell you how Marinol is just not an effective solution for their medical needs. As we move on, National Association of Drug Court Professionals continues with their uh, research here about marijuana and saying that smoked marijuana could no more be considered a medication than cigarettes or alcohol. <laughs> smoked marijuana could no more be considered let me let me get you the context of this unless you think you know i'm i'm a little crazy here they say um Let's see, although cigarettes and alcohol have undeniable effects that many people may find palliative, alleviating short-term stress, they are very dirty drugs. For example, many people believe alcohol and nicotine lower their stress level, but in fact these drugs are proven to increase anxiety, lower stress tolerance, and exacerbate insomnia. Those drugs are also associated with a host of serious medical conditions. For these reasons, physicians would rarely, if ever, prescribe or recommend these drugs to treat a medical condition. Smoked marijuana could no more be considered a medication than cigarettes or alcohol yet they won't lock you up for the cigarettes and the alcohol now will they yeah you can have all the deadly nasty dirty drugs cigarettes and alcohol you want but the medically beneficial cannabis that's got to remain in schedule one that's got to stay illegal this is the insanity our country lives in and this is the propaganda our elected officials are being fed every day with your taxpayer dollars paying for it We'll have the debunked version of this up on our blog, stash.normal.org. Print out a copy and pass it out to your friends. For Cannabis Carrying Gunja John, I'm Radical Russ. Go Pack Go! Take care. This is Normal Show Live, the voice of the marijuana nation. And take care of each other, tokers. You take a seed, you plant it, you grow it, you dry it, you roll it, you smoke it. You take a seed, you plant it.